Hello and welcome to the Switch Underground. My name is Danny and it's Diablo 4 time. Now, the game came out, oh god, probably a couple weeks ago now. And I've been playing a Barbarian and I'm level 69. Nice. My title is Willie Skinner. Nice. So I'm playing a Worldwind build here, just a simple one off of Max Roll that I've been following the whole time. And there'll be a link below in the description. Hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful day. We're just gonna talk about the game a little bit, run a nightmare dungeon, see if we get clapped. I'm obviously in the end game portion now. I've beaten the campaign and it was fantastic. Do recommend that you go through the whole thing. You're gonna have to anyway. The season is hopefully starting here sometime in July. So this character that I'm playing now will be in the internal eternal realm as there will be two different character uh, sort of repositories just like it was in D3 we'll have our seasonal characters and the seasons will last about three months and then we will have our eternal characters which is where all the characters get dumped after so nightmare dungeons sort of like rifts let's be honest they um, just did a patch that increased all of the EXP for Nightmare Dungeons, so you can go... You can level up much, much faster, which is awesome. So, it's your standard Barbarian stuff. Don't stand in the poop. You're gonna do a ton of damage, and you're gonna almost die just like that. <laughs> anyway, the game is a ton of fun, and... Um, it hits all of the notes, man. All of those, like, old-school Diablo vibes and stuff. It's just great. And I also realize I haven't actually talked this much in a long time. And I'm already kind of, like, feeling a little winded, dude. So, bear with me. There's a lot of new stuff happening right now. As you can see, we're actually playing on the PS5, not the Nintendo Switch. I actually got this capture card. For my birthday, back in February, and I was like, oh good, I get to play like all the latest and greatest stuff, and it'll be awesome. And then I got super sad. And it wasn't because of anything, it's just how the brain functions. So I didn't really do anything for a long time. And uh, now we are. I don't know. That's kind of how those cycles go. Like, you, you go up, you go down, and then one day, you kind of wake up and it's gone and you're like, oh, okay. Why did I spend all of that time being upset at the world? Wow, I have like no life. So I think this is like a Nightmare Dungeon level 22. So it's not like super high, but it is the first tier of the world tier 4 uh, dungeons. So it's definitely a challenge. And I need to think for a second here. Hold on. There's a lot of there's a lot more poison in here than I thought there was gonna be, so I thought I would have a little more downtime to actually not pay much attention to the game. So that I could do stuff. Oh, I joined an event, the wandering soul. Alright, so let's take a minute. Let's recalibrate. This particular nightmare dungeon well, all of the nightmare dungeons have these things called affixes, right? And all a Nightmare Dungeon is, is a souped up dungeon of a dungeon that already exists in the overworld. So, to make it more challenging, they put in these, like, things that you can do. In this case, it's that little thing that's following me right there. It stops, makes this little zone. If I get in it, it makes it all black and I can't use my abilities, and that sucks. So, let's focus on the dungeon here and what we're supposed to be doing, which is actually slay, or slay the infested villagers. This is a particularly large pack, so we're going to try to stay out of the poop. Stay on the fringes, stay out of the pools. Um, my life bar is all poison, which is awesome. Not. Dude, I need some globes, man. There. We live. Fantastic. Right, so the affixes. This one has this little guy that follows you around, he explodes, makes that zone. There are some affixes that like, cast these like lightning things and you gotta stand inside this little ball, bubble, or it like, 
claps you immediately, which totally sucks. And uh, there's a lot of them that are more annoying than others. This one is probably one of the easier ones to deal with, because all it is is a slow little thing that like follows you around. And I freaking hate spiders in this game, dude. They are annoying. Alright, let's see, where do we gotta go? You're not getting me? Okay. So, about the game. What we like. Um, I... am of two minds. Let's talk about gear first. Gear is everywhere, okay? And it has multiple tiers. So you see sacred there. If you have a normal item, it won't say anything. But then you can get an upgraded version that's sacred and a further upgraded version that's called ancestral. So instead of like, ancestral stuff is basically like the souped up legendary versions of things. Except they can also be yellow items as well as, um, as well as legendaries. So you can get sacred legendaries and ancestral legendaries, which is kind of what you always kind of want. And this is a fun little bit. A lot of these shrines now, inside these dungeons, there's always usually always one that's kind of cursed. And it'll like, spawn this little event here. Which I think is actually kind of cool because it's like, instantly gives you like, lots of mob packs to fight. So you're not like, hunting around looking for stuff. Because one thing that people have complained about is the mob density in this game is not like it was in the others. They are sort of... I don't want to say few and far between, but you're not gonna find a lot of the like roaming packs of like 50 like you used to. Ooh. Gotta be careful. Is this the last wave? Alright. We gotta defeat all of these waves and get our super chest, but once we do that, it'll give us the chest and it'll unlock the shrine, which is a conduit shrine. Which I really love the way that they've handled the conduit shrines in this one, and you'll see why in a second. Little succubus. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're dead. He died. Can you believe that? Of course you can. I can. Alright. So, as is tradition, that's what happens. You make a Diablo video, and you start. Yap, yap, yap in your face. And then you're dead. God, it's this stupid succubus. So we're just gonna chase her ass around till she's gone. Then we're gonna come deal with you guys. So I'm in this, like, funky mode right now where I get kind of fury starved. If there's not a lot of monsters around to feed me or beat me. And that should do it. Wow, we actually got the greater one. Look at that, chest armor sacred and a helm that's sacred. Will we use it? Who knows. Oh, that wasn't a conduit shine, it was a greed one? That sucks. Hopefully we find a conduit one so you can see what it is. And gold is actually, surprisingly, important <laughs> for once uh, in a Diablo game. And it's actually kind of a pain in the butt to get. So when you get items, you have the option to salvage them or sell them. Oh my god, dude. This poison stuff is just murdering us right now. Can't keep health. We just constantly are standing in the poop because we're dumb. And my god, poor boys. You know what? We'll take it. Just give us all the things, man. I'm ready. Am I ready? I hope so. I do like that my shouts are moving a lot quicker now. Before I was like waiting on their cooldowns a lot, but now things are good, man. Things are good. And we can see my level. I'm gonna be, I'll probably be 70 by the time this is up. I haven't found one infested villager. What is this map, dude? This better be one. Hey, we found one. Cool. Thank you. I just wish there wasn't... Is that an affix? There's a way for us to check. Hold on. So that guy's gonna explode. Make a bunch of new spiders. 
we will destroy those spiders. That's not what I want. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, I thought maybe there was something that was leaving all those pools of, like, poison on the ground? Apparently not. I'm just that lucky. Alright, so the item stuff has multiple tiers. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've played it or at least read about it. What I don't like is that... Oh my god, bro. Every one of those spiders leaves a poison pool when it dies. And in a thing full of spiders, that sucks. Alright. What I don't like is that there is so many stats, dude, on everything. And not only do you have to deal with upgrading your item, there's multiple tiers to it, right? Because now we have affixes. And the affixes are super important to all builds. So when you want to upgrade an item, you have to make sure you have the affix that you want. You have to have the gold and crafting materials to actually upgrade it. And the gems, but the gems are pretty pretty easy to come by. Gems haven't really been an issue. What is an issue is staying alive through all the shit. Okay. So, that's my main one. Because as soon as you get something that's awesome, and usually you're excited to get something new that's awesome, but now, when you get something new that could potentially be better than what you have, you're just kind of like, oh my god, do I have the resources to actually use this thing? And even in the end game, it's pretty challenging to actually find some stuff that you need, specifically to like apply affixes and upgrade legendary weapons, you have to actually salvage a ton of them because you need a very special material that you only get from salvaging weapons. And that, that is my big hang up right now. Okay, here's the last one. Oh my god, this one's gonna hurt. We're just gonna like kite them out a little bit, see if we can stay out of the reach of these stupid pools. It doesn't let us generate as much fury as we could, but you know what? We will be alive. And it's better to be alive and take a little longer to do something than to be dead. And I think we can all agree that being dead is not good. Okay, we did it. So now, um, a lot of these dungeons have a lot of formulas. You might open, you might have to uh, destroy some stuff or save a prisoner lots of prisoners and then it opens another section and you might have a boss and then once you get in this section a lot of times they'll close you in and you gotta have this like crazy fight before the way opens oh my god okay everybody we're staying out of red circles our little whirlwind affix is just gonna pull our boys to us so that we can successfully do this so even though we're running away, we're still going to kind of pull them along with us eventually. And the way that this world, particular whirlwind build works, I just kind of have to like poke them with it. I don't have to like constantly be hitting them because there's a lot of bleed and there's a lot of bo a lot of bonus damage from the bleeds. And that's okay. And it works. See, there's an ancestral one. So this is the highest tier of this particular rare item that we'll ever be able to find. And this is the sigil things here. Um, the sigils are what you use to open the nightmare dungeons. So in a perfect world, we'll travel to this new place. And uh, there might be a boss down here and we'll be done. So just like in Diablo 3, when you would upgrade your legendary gems when you completed rifts, or greater rifts, in this one, you upgrade something called sigils, which are used, or I'm sorry, not sigils glyphs which are used on the paragon board which is the end game progression like the paragon system in diablo 3 except in this one you get to choose your own adventure man you're not just pumping up stats you are building an entire board of fun and it's kind of crazy so this part we either have to travel straight to the boss or find a key to open a door and it looks like we're going to be able to go straight here our uh particular skill is not up but that's okay 
We're just going to follow her around. And see what happens. You got to be careful with those boys. They explode. Obviously, our shouts are all freaking down right now. And now they're back up. All right, where's the boss lady? There we go. Oh, and she's gone. And then once the dungeon is complete, a little orby thing should spawn here. Aha. And you get this awakened glyph stone thing. Which is um, where you get to level up your glyphs. And when you level them up, it's just like the legendary gems. They do more damage or they do more like stat bonuses of whatever it is they're doing. Did I actually get some paragon points? Oh my god, I have two. So this is my current paragon board. How do I full screen that thing? Oh, there we go. So you have these boards. This is your starter board, and then each board has little, has gates on it. So you can attach different boards to it, and you build like this tree of progression, and it's fantastic. And there is a board I need to attach here, but I don't know, remember which one it is, but it's irrelevant right this second. So you have these like rare nodes that do specific things. Looks like I need some dexterity to get a bonus from it. And then you can socket these glyphs which have names, this one's called Disembowel, and increases my physical damage over time, and also the ability to reduce some cooldown stuff when I kill a bleeding enemy, and since every enemy I kill is bleeding, there's always a 10% chance it's gonna reduce my cooldowns, and that helps me keep my shouts up, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no scrolls of town portal or anything like that, it's just automatic, which is great, because it's always a pain in the butt to find those things back in the day. Actually, it wasn't that bad. I'll take that back. Alright, so that's a Nightmare Dungeon down. How long How long have we been going here? 17 minutes. You know, it's been a while, and I don't want to screw the pooch here on the first, like, PS5 recording. So what we're going to do is just talk a little bit more about the game and how I feel about it. And work on some of this side quest junk. So all the world has these renowned things uh, where you do quests, dungeons, waypoints, discoveries, altars of Lilith, and you get all these bonuses when you finish it. We're working on finishing this particular zone down here. Uh, where's a good spot to chill for that? Yeah, probably right there. And uh, there's a lot going on here, and I like it a lot. It's still up in the air what all's going to be happening when the season starts going forward I'm probably going to play a druid for the season is what I'm thinking I mean I have to get I had to get the well Hungarian out of my system and of course the season bonuses will probably determine what class that I play in the future but pending anything weird or anything extremely overpowered I will be going probably a druid for the first season and that will be great but yeah aside from it being super overwhelming to actually like deal with items which is not a bad problem to have because the coolest part of these games for me is actually just finding stuff sadly I like a little surprise in my life and uh, what are we collecting snake venom how many do we need 10. Okay. Oh, one of the biggest things that we didn't even talk about is we have a freaking horse, dude. How cool is that? You got a horse, you can like make it go fast, and that's just awesome. And they make you work for it too. Like, you don't actually unlock the horse until super far in the campaign. And you're like almost halfway or. Pretty close to 50 by the time I got mine. I think I was like 40 something. But if you like super power through it, you can snag it. Probably 27, 28, I think is the earliest I ever heard somebody grab it. Because you have to get all the way to the beginning of Act 4 in the campaign to get the horse. But the horse is cool. There's different horse like skins and different horse armor. And it's got like little things you can put on it, that little gold chest in my booty cheeks, that there is um, 
like an addition to the horse. And even this like spectral horse is like a special drop that you get from the world bosses. I mean, there's a lot going on here, man. I can explain everything, but um, right now, the biggest complaints that I hear in the community is that the end game is kind of lacking and they're kind of right. I mean, but it is Diablo. So I'm not really sure what people are after here. I think most of the complaints that you hear coming from the different communities are mostly from new players or people who have gotten very much used to not playing games like this. I mean, the big thing is it's all in the seasons for me personally and I think that's what most of the Diablo fans will be doing. So the end game right now is nearly uncertain because right now it's kind of a choose your own adventure. I think the the bigger issue there is with um never mind. I forgot what I was going to say. Apparently there is no bigger issue. There was for 5 seconds in my brain and and now there is not. One thing that will kind of suck is in the season, like, because you have two character realms, some things are account-wide that you unlock in in the regions. Like all these alt Altars of Lilith that grant you stat bonuses, those will carry over seasonal or not. And right now it's kind of up in the air as to what your renown will look like. That's your progression for world discovery, basically. This stuff is the renown. Are we done? Oh my god, we're done. Cool. So, who knows, man? We'll see what happens. As far as making content, I don't know, man. My Diablo content is always like... Good, good. Are we reading this stuff? We're not reading that stuff. My Diablo content is always like, hey, watch me run this dungeon while I talk about life and stuff. And that's probably what I'll do, just because that's what I like to do. Okay. Then he will not. Understand? Sure. Where's this guy living? You may tell him that he is, forgiven. is this the Tree of Whispers guy? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So everything will be hinging. Like, I would say the... I don't want to say the success, but how people see the game's success at launch, I think, has yet to be determined until the season happens. Because, what is here though? Oh, that's something else. Your horse can also get scared and kick you off, which is kind of funny. And these vengeful spirits, the worst, worst monster in the game. I must wait. Oh. I guess we're fighting things. Hold on. Ooh, what is this? Greed again. So we'll see what the season does. I hope it's awesome. I really do. And I think that even if it's not the best, it can only get better, dude. Only get better. One cool thing is you can put these little waypoints on your map. Obviously this one has no idea how to get there easily since I can just go up here. But most of the time the pathing is pretty good and you can follow it and get a good idea where the heck you're supposed to be. And I think that's great. So we went to grab this thing for this guy. What's cool about these side quests is a lot of them are chained. So that um, you do one and then it leads to another step with the same characters and then it keeps going and keeps going. Did I just kill this guy? One final. Oh, there's another one in the chain. Dig it 
top. Why wouldn't we go dig up a grave? That makes total sense, dude. We might as well just do it. So, um... Ooh, okay. Direct damage to stun them. Eh. So I used to get the caches for, um... Doing, uh... God, this thing just has no idea how to get there, does it? I mean, to be fair, this part of the map is pretty... Pretty tangly. I need more time. But you get to make your character and make him look cool, or her, and you get to like choose your voice and stuff. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I would say it's a lot better. Oh god, where am I? Why did I jump off my horse? Dang it. Now we gotta kill all this stuff. Fine. Oh, we're near the zone though. That's good. So a lot of the times the biggest decision is, do I get off my horse or do I stay on it? Normally when these vengeful spirits are around, I prefer to stay on the horse. Ooh, is this the shallow grave? No. I don't know where the shallow grave is, but we will find it. Screw you, Banshee. You know, I'm almost completing this quest right here, and I think I'm going to. With this harvesting stuff. So, as far as end game goals go, you can do nightmare dungeons, you can do PvP stuff, or there's this like tree of whispers mechanic that is explained later through the campaign, but you basically do a bunch of these like funky quests that are like floating around the world. And they just seemingly pop up random, like this harvest, the, the, the mire thing. That's going to give me, like, these grim favors, and then I can go turn them in at this big old tree. Oh my gosh, I should probably finish this right now, huh? What is this? Oh. I guess, uh, we're just doing that. Was that it? No. The Shadows of Corruption. Oh, it spawned a bunch of mean boys. Uh, was that it? Well, we did it. Once you get to ten Grim Favors, you can go uh, do that stuff. Do we have to run up back up to that guy now? Nope. Looks like we get to go to town. Or no, we get to go here. Oh, we gotta burn them. Okay. So, I mean, there's a lot to do at the end game. Um, seems like your power tier, about 80, is kind of as far as you need to go. I mean, you can get to level 100, but it seems to be super min-maxy at that point. It's like super fine-tuning everything, and that takes a lot of work. Your loss is great. And in true Diablo fashion, we have to run back up here. Luckily, between the horse and the fast travel stuff all over the place, it doesn't take long to get anywhere, which is great. Oh god. I've been rambling for about a half an hour. Can't do that here. Ideally, I think what I would might do... What? How many of these do I have to kill? Just for this Grim Favors thing. Oh, only 50? Okay. Well, we can do that. We're just gonna bust this out real quick. I would... This is an excellent, like, streaming game. Unfortunately, streaming is pretty challenging given the schedule that I have to keep and when I could do it. But it's not impossible. 
So I might just be like, throw on the recording stuff, and then just sort of upload VODs of my leveling sessions. If I feel like actually like sitting and talking for that long. Because a lot of times you just kind of sit here and zone out when you play Diablo, which is what I love about it. Because you don't have to... It's not a lot of brain power, but all of the kicking ass. You know what I mean? Which is just fantastic. Man, this is a great place for like farm and stuff. There's just monsters everywhere. And as annoying as these guys seem, these big snake boys are actually one of my favorites in the game. I just love the way they look, and they're huge and cool. How I took Grisha's blood for He murdered a guy. Oh my god, we leveled. <gasps> that was the goal, wasn't it? Hey, and we unlocked a new potion. Not you. He's, they're ruining my celebration, and I don't like it. Alright, we're gonna pop over here to the main city. Don't you shoot me. Turn. We go again. So, another little cool mechanic is you get to upgrade the effectiveness of your potions. Which is kind of cool. And you also have, like, um... You have all these consumables, all these elixirs you can take, and you actually have, um, what are they called? We're gonna find out in two seconds. If you've got the making uh, incense, which are things that affect everybody around you, which is pretty sweet too. Looks like I only... 55 life and 35% of your maximum life. Beautiful. Two more potion upgrades to go, and we'll have them all. How's our... Ooh. This might... Today? No, probably not today. Tomorrow we will get all the way to clear that one out, and then we have... Two more to go. And there's also this, like, random system where you can spend these obal things to get random items, sort of like the Gambler in Diablo 2. And I think the shady merchant guy in Diablo 3. I must wait. Alright. I think I think that's really it, man. Been yapping long enough. My throat's tired now. But uh, you know what? I will answer a question. I pulled out the kids' questions just in case there was a lull, but there wasn't. Uh let's see here. Oh. Ooh. Oh, here we go. I saw a word and I, and I know it's the one I want to read. What would a magical car specifically designed for you be like? Okay. I've talked about this before. Now, if I have three wishes, there's three of them. Okay? Superman's powers, the ability to control the weather, and a magical food menu that lets me order anything from anywhere at any time. So, my magical car would of course have one of those menus in it so I could just you know push the pizza button glove box opens boom pops out I think my magical car would look like a normal car it might I mean my my brain is going Wienermobile but that's just kind of where my brain is always anyway it's just wieners and wieners all the time you know glizzy gladiator all that and um, it would definitely fly Although, I think it would be better... You know what? Let's change it, okay? I don't want my car to fly. I want my car to jump. Hulk jump style. It leaps up into the air. I can then glide for a bit, but then I have to go back down eventually and leap again. And I think that... <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. Between that, jumping car that looks like a wiener, the food menu... Yeah, I guess it would look like a wiener. Um, I would be set, dude. Of course, it would have, um, you know, an autopilot mode. Oh my god, there's a dog. Hey, buddy. Not while I'm in town. Oh, I just wanted to pet him. Hey, hey. I think there's a Twitter account where it's like, can you pet the dog in games? 
Guess who's failing right now? Hey, hey. Not while I'm in Okay, town. whatever. So yeah, that would that would be my magical car. Which would be pretty great. Anyway, hopefully, um the ability for me to record videos all hinges on when. This particular day was special because everybody left the house and I hadn't been alone in the house for some time, so I was like, you know what? We're gonna do this thing today. And of course, test out the PS5 stuff and see how it goes. And we did, and it's good. And there's a mental health component and all kinds of stuff that makes this super important, yet my brain does not want to align with that for whatever reason. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. Uh, be good to each other, and I will see you guys in the next one. I got a ton of stuff here. There's like Nintendo Switch games here that I just got. Um, I got Final Fantasy 16. Uh, we got Street Fighter 6. There's tons of stuff to play. And you gotta find the time to do it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.